even if he had not decided to transfer this spring. Fifth-year defensive end Jay Hayes pictured above would not likely have started for Notre Dame in the fall. Irish head coach Brian Kelly said the improved play from rising junior Khalid Kareem was forcing Hayes, a 13-game starter in 2017, into a backup role. We felt like Kareem had earned the starting position here based upon his work both in the weight room and on the football field, Kelly said Saturday. He was going to be the starter at that position. We believe that based upon his production. Hayes announced his intentions to transfer Friday evening via Twitter. Once he receives his Notre Dame degree next month, Hayes will be immediately eligible wherever he goes with one of eligibility remaining. The Irish had thought that year would be spent providing depth and experience on the defensive front. Jay understands the standards that we have here, and he felt like a change would be better for him. Kelly said, we gave him the opportunity to come back if he could meet the standards that we set here. In his first collegiate action, Kareem made 21 tackles last, including 5.5 for loss with three sacks. He split time at end with both Hayes and Andrew Trombetti, so even as Kareem surprised with his play, he did not play much more than two dozen snaps per game. With Trombetti out of eligibility and pursuing his NFL dreams, and Hayes now departing, Kareem will need to triple the workload. If there is a Notre Dame concern with the defensive line, that uptick suddenly becomes the worry. He has real good length, and he has a knack for pass rushing, Kelly said. Just has a knack of being there and getting to the quarterback. How do we get to him up to 60? Snaps, fatigue, strength, all those things coming together. But he has some real innate ability to find the quarterback. Roughly speaking, a defense has to face 80 to 100 snaps per game. The difference will be primarily handled by rising junior Adi Agundaji, who saw action in only five games last, all within the first seven games. When Agundaji first arrived at Irish practices two years ago, it was as a raw playmaker, far from being physically developed such that he could hold his own against Power 5 competition. Along with that, his football IQ also needed to progress some, as it usually does with freshmen. Kelly and Notre Dame have seen both of those aspects grow, and that may have also played a part in Hayes' decision. Agundaji was pushing and earning those reps, Kelly said. This ISNT to beat up on Jay Hayes while HES not here, but there was great competition at that position. Addy was coming on. HES a young man at the football end of things, it's coming. His strength is outstanding in the weight room. His work ethic is outstanding. This is a guy that is ascending for us. Rising junior linebacker turned end Jameer Jones will likely fill out the depth chart at end with Hayes' departure. Notre Dame confirms new indoor facility It has been long known the university had plans for another indoor practice area for the football team. The loft as sports complex is a solid space, albeit slightly undersized with ceilings far too low, but as the only space it creates myriad scheduling conflicts between various varsity sports. Throughout the early spring, two soccer teams, two lacrosse teams and the football program compete for time on the field while the track team uses the cinder surrounding the artificial grass. Hence the confirmation of the 111, 4,000 square foot Irish Indoor Athletics Center. It will be built on one of the outdoor practice fields the Irish would be using this month if it were not a bothersomely cold April. Reducing that overload was crucial to our development as a program, Kelly said. Well be good custodians for other sports, as well, from a football perspective, it's our lab. We didnt really have a lab for us to go in there and do the work we needed. Throughout the winter, Kelly explained, the football team has to begin its weight program at 5.30 every morning in order to also get its running work done immediately after strength training. With the added space, the running could theoretically be handled in the afternoon, now not stepping on the toes of a soccer practice. The new building is scheduled to be completed in July of 2019. Inside the Irish reading, Notre Dame's offense searches for reloaded skill positions, two backs without a single college carry key to Notre Dame's 2018 ground game, Notre Dame's receivers hope for a big play future, unlike their past, limitations continue to define Notre Dame's safeties, to Jay Hayes to transfer from Notre Dame outside the Irish reading, Quentin Nelson is a generational offensive guard prospect PFF 2018 NFL Mock Draft 3, 2018 NFL Mock Draft No. 3 RotoWorld.com NFL Mock Draft 3.0, let's take into account some trades LA Times, Stuart Mandel on fans' patience with young quarterbacks Dollar Notre Dame fifth-year defensive end Jay Hayes announced he will finish his college career elsewhere Friday evening via Twitter.
With one year of eligibility remaining, Hayes will be immediately eligible wherever he ends up thanks to his graduation in May. I just want to thank the University of Notre Dame for the love and support they've poured into me, Hayes wrote. I will, sick like to thank the coaching staff for granting me my release as a graduate transfer. ND is a special place to grow as man on and off the field. I've learned so many valuable lessons that I will carry with me for the rest of my life. I'm going to miss the relationships I've established along with all the guys on the team. It's nothing but love for you all. Hayes' transfer comes as a bit of a surprise to a defense that was returning 10 starters, now 9. Some foreshadowing may have been offered just before Easter when he was absent from a practice, explained by Irish head coach Brian Kelly as academics with no further elaboration. Without Hayes, rising junior Khalid Kareem will become a pivotal piece of the defensive line, likely splitting snaps with either Adi Agundaji or Julian Okwara, while Dalen Hayes remains the starter at the other end spot. Between the quartet of rising juniors, the two positions are not short of experience or talent, while rising sophomore Kofi Wardlow, incoming freshman Justin Adam Lola, and linebacker turned end rising junior Jameer Jones offer needed depth. Hayes finishes his Notre Dame career with 39 tackles, including 27 last with one sack. He played in 26 games across threes, preserving a year of eligibility his sophomore year after injuries to veterans like Sheldon Day forced Hayes into action as a freshman in 2014. Playing those three games did not necessarily sit well with Hayes at the time. The Irish roster still projects to have 88 players, three more than the maximum allowed by the NCAA. Asked a simple question about Devon Studstall, Notre Dame safety's coach Terry Joseph used it to make a broader point. The fact that his overview came in response to a thought of the rising junior safety implies the point applies to Studstall, but it also sheds light on all the Irish safeties. All those guys are in the mix because nobody has done enough up until this point to pull away, Joseph said Thursday. That includes not only Studstall, but also rising juniors Jalen Elliott pictured above and Aoi Gilman, rising sophomore Jordan Jenmark Heath and, even as he spends some time working at Nickelback, rising senior Nick Coleman. After spending the last week or so at safety, as well, early enrolled freshman Houston Griffith joins the mix of options still under consideration at safety. They each have flaws, but to Joseph that is hardly an exclusionary distinction, as long as each player is aware of his shortcomings. You can be a good player with limitations when you understand what your limits are and you don't put yourself in position to get exposed, Joseph said. When you realize what you can't do, try to stay away from that situation. Obviously, avoiding a particular situation is largely dictated by an understanding of assignments and pre-snap reads. Thus, logic points to what has occurred after eight spring practices. The most game-tested players are faring best. Elliot and Gilman have shown the strongest grasp of their responsibilities. Joseph assumes that is due to their advantage in experience. Elliot has appeared in all 25 possible games during his two years at Notre Dame, including starting all 13 last year. Gilman started 12 games and played in 14 as a freshman at Navy before last summer's transfer. Those guys don't really have a lot of panic to them, Joseph said. They're calm and put themselves in position that they need to be in. That is not to say they do not also have their areas needing improvement. Gilman in particular needs to reintegrate himself into the mindset of a defensive contributor rather than a scout team role player. In that latter duty last, Gilman did not need to worry about reads or assignments. He was simply mimicking that week's opponent. Now, Gilman must work through each progression, check each route, understand the offense as much as the defense. Aoi is a guy who is very athletic, has great instincts, a guy that can play from sideline to sideline, Joseph said, now you want him to go past the speed limit a little bit yet still be under control. He was so excited to get back into the mix after spending a year on scout team. Gilman's and Elliot's experience helps them stay just ahead, if ahead at all, of the likes of Coleman. His athleticism and physicality is a large part of the reason he is under consideration at Nickelback. The exact nature of that position, though, requires just as much understanding and anticipation as the safety spot does. If you were just testing him in a combined setting, Coleman would be off the charts, Joseph said. From a skill standpoint, he has the tools to be a starter at a Power 5 school. Now it's about refining those tools to become a great football player. A lot of that starts above the shoulders. Such went the theme as Joseph discussed each of the players under his tutelage. 
Gilman needs to get back in the habit of reading the offence. Coleman needs to understand the position a bit better. Jenmark Heath has to be a better guy in space and in the deep part of the field. These critiques will likely continue well into pre-season practices in August. Joseph at least hopes so, figuring that open competition will keep the entire group involved. It will also serve to give incoming freshman Derek Allen a chance to the rotation. Whoever finally does enough to pull away, Joseph insisted he will not be bound by anything other than that performance in determining his starters. With his arrival this off-season replacing defensive coordinator, safeties coach Mike Elko after he left for Texas AM, Joseph touted a clean slate. At the end of the day, I love them all, but the truth of the matter is, the two best guys are going to run out there against Michigan on September 1st, he said. I don't care what grade they're in, I don't care what jersey number, or, how long they've been here. At the end of the day, the two best guys are going to run out there. That is 149 days away, if anyone is curious, meaning those players have that long to make their skills and qualities stand out more than the limitations each one has and, given human nature, will continue to have. Although Notre Dame lost its two leading receivers from 2017, one to the NFL draft and one to repeated off-field mistakes, the need to find replacements is less urgent than it is at running back. That is not an inherent good thing. Rather, it is a reflection of the lack of production from last year's receivers. As a group, they totaled 12 catches of 30 or more yards last, led by four from NFL-bound Equinemius St. Brown. The returnees accounted for only six of those, with three of them coming from Chase Claypool in just one weekend, against Wake Forest in early November. The receivers are well aware more is needed moving forward. After last year and what we are able to do on offense, and what we were not able to do, our focus is helping in the passing game and being more explosive, receivers coach Del Alexander said last week. Showing a dimension in the offense that we haven't used yet, there is a focus and determination to be playmakers and be fast and take advantage of secondaries. Aside from Claypool's nine catches for 180 yards and a score against the Demon Deacons, the returning Irish receiver with the best, arguably only, track record of big plays is obviously Miles Boykin. Plenty has already been said about the rising senior, an unavoidable result after providing the highlight moments before the ended. That memory somewhat obscures Boykin's entire 2017 production of 12 catches for 253 yards and two two counts. Both he and Claypool need to focus on the basics before reaching playmaker status. For Claypool, those fundamentals are coming while not why cleared for practice as he recovers from shoulder surgery. If he taps into those a bit more, Alexander argues Claypool could reach unexpected levels. Chase is an angry and physical blocker, he is an emotional player, Alexander said. We have to try to channel that emotion into, take this step right here. He just wants to make the big play. Even with his size, speed and strength, it is difficult for him to free himself up. If you're replaying against an All-American cornerback, you're replaying against a guy that has been playing for four years and really understands where you are aligned and anticipating what you're doing. We really need to focus on Chase and his football IQ so that he can use his talents. Continuing with a big play theme, only rising senior Chris Finke can also claim a reception of greater than 30 yards last A. 48-yarder from Ian Book in mop-up time against Miami O. Pulling in only five other catches for 54 yards may not speak to a plethora of potential beneath the surface but that is exactly what Alexander expects thanks to Finke's broader understanding of football, something of an inverse to Claypool. With Notre Dame well ahead of Miami O, Chris Finke pulled in a 48-yard reception from backup quarterback Ian Book. Ab photo, Charles Rex Arbar guessed at this point in the game, Finky knows everything, Alexander said, were doing so many little things with Finky that help him have a knack for the game outside of the playbook. That's his spring, because he understands exactly what we want, he knows the playbook. At the same time, we're talking about leverage, we're talking about using his height to gain an advantage, using his quickness, timing on breaks and anticipation of people around him. With Finky, we're doing some things that help you play for a long time. Finky's quickness fits alongside the speed of rising sophomore, Michael Young and fifth-year Freddie Canteen, the two names Alexander offered along with Finky's when discussing true top-end speed. Including rising junior Javon McKinley, they form what may be the back end of Notre Dame's primary receivers. 
especially in the case of McKinley, the concept of being among the starters is quite the ascension considering he spent last working with the scout team while rehabbing a leg injury. That time kept him away from Alexander. McKinley is in both groups, he can roll in with the first of the second group, Alexander said. His progress has been good. H.E.'s are made some plays. There have been some opportunities that helps missed, but like most guys, he has a different determination because he is going into year three and he wants that opportunity for his family to see him play. It is conceivable, maybe even likely, early enrolled freshman Michael Jones finds himself in a similar scout to contribute a transition a year from now. Even with his January arrival, Jones is behind the rest of the receivers in both understanding and development, as should be expected of any freshman. If he had come in with the three other receivers in his class, Jones would have at least had the support of their presumed struggles. By Alexander's math, being the only freshman is ten times that difficulty. His advantage won't show up until we get to summer camp, Alexander said. For him, we're not going to slow down because we have a veteran group. H.E. is chasing his tail and trying to chase everybody out in front of him. This spring, Jones is somewhat limited in team-wide drills, primarily getting work in one-on-one -on -one matchups or seven-on-seven drills. When joined by incoming freshmen Braden Lenzi, Kevin Austin and Lawrence Keyes, the quartet will fulfill Alexander's preferred promise to his charges. Everyone in the room will be replaced one day. They decide how soon, no matter how Notre Dame goes about it, replacing 1,830 rushing yards and 14 toucans on the ground will be difficult. That kind of production does not come around readily, especially when it comes from only two players, one of which accounted for 1,430 yards and nine toucans in mounting a brief Heisman campaign. That is the task ahead of the Irish and, more precisely, running backs coach Autry Denson. In rising senior Dexter Williams pictured above and rising junior Tony Jones, Denson has two possibilities with plenty of room to grow. They stats alone speak to the potential for more, Williams in 2017 to 360 yards and four two counts on only 39 carries, a 9.2 yards per attempt average, in 10 games. Jones in 2017 to 232 yards and three two counts on 44 carries, a 5.3 yards per attempt average, in 12 games. Combining the concept of health with the opportunity created by the loss of NFL-bound Josh Adams, those numbers should increase. Notre Dame head coach Brian Kelly has already said the rushing game's future may hinge on Williams' development, with development, it becomes a viable two-back attack. A two-back attack will have a starter nominally, but Denson hopes neither accepts the fate of a number two back. There's no way to prepare to be number two, Denson said last week. Every one of those guys has the mindset from a preparation standpoint that he is preparing to be the starter, so when his opportunity comes about, he is ready to take advantage of it. Given the natures of the running back position, though, Denson will likely need more than just those two upperclassmen. If the 2017 Irish underscored any football truth, it pertained to the slim odds of keeping running backs healthy. Ankle injuries and muscle tweaks limited Adams, Williams and Jones throughout the, creating the chance for Dion McIntosh to rush for 368 yards and 5 two counts on 65 carries. CJ Holmes also took 8 carries for 32 yards as a result of those injuries, getting activated into an active duty role in case McIntosh, too, went down with an injury. Both McIntosh and Holmes have since been dismissed from the program due to violations of team rules, and with Notre Dame currently four projected scholarships above the NCAA maximum of 85, speculation about either or both returning to the team before the fall seems unfounded at best. Jamir Smith Rivals.com Avoiding those injuries is just this side of impossible. Denson joked he would need a glass bubble, perhaps even on game days, to keep all the backs healthy. Accepting that reality, the progress of early enrolled freshman Jamir Smith and rising sophomore Jafar Armstrong becomes more important than the usual third stringer's growth. Smith has already impressed Denson with his ability to retain information, furthering the options he would offer a game plan if needed. He is kind of a cross between speed and power, Denson said. Catches the ball a lot better than I thought he would, and retains information really well. His academic IQ and his football IQ are mirroring up really well. Jafar Armstrong Rivals.com Armstrong continues to split his time between receiver and running back, though Denson wants as much time with Armstrong as possible. Armstrong spent last working as a receiver.
If Notre Dame can prove he is a viable running back, his presence could suddenly create a variety of formation difficulties for defenses. The fact that he can play both, you can never have too many guys that play multiple positions, Denson said. We run a spread defense. It's about getting the best five guys on the field from those skill positions and just trying to threaten the defense with the best players possible. The biggest obstacle between both Smith and Armstrong and a plethora of playing time may be the same challenge that limited Williams at points the last few years. Jones was an exception to the rule, not one disproving the rule, of young backs struggling in pass protection. Having lived through that experience himself once upon a time, Denson offered an understandable explanation for that struggle. When you're in high school, usually these guys are the best player on their team, so they aren't called to block a whole lot, he said. They usually have the ball in their hands, one way or another. It's that, but it's also that our playbook is a lot bigger. Understanding where you fit into the protection when the protections are called, that just takes repetition. One luxury of having so few backs is it guarantees Smith and Armstrong get those repetitions this spring, and they will almost certainly need that understanding this fall when either Williams or Jones sprains another ankle.